Alright, hi everyone. Uh, now this video is going to be just a little bit of refresh for some of you who are away for the holiday during Christmas and New Year and um, yeah, I'm also away for the holiday as well, approximately about three weeks. So when I come back, I wasn't sure on what to do in the Vernon Brink and a couple in the meta maps aside from the Dragon Stand because the Dragon Stand, uh, I did that quite a fair bit so you know, it wasn't really that difficult for me to get a hold of it when I come back but for the other, the other meta events in the um, Verdon Brink the second one is the Auric Persin and the um, Tango Death that uh, I just wasn't sure on a couple of, um, you know, couple of events so this video will be a little bit of refresh for uh, me and also hopefully for some of you who are away for the holidays as well so you know like if you uh, um, you know go on a holiday or you know away from the game for a long period of time and you come back and you un you are not sure what to do then feel free to refer this to this video on uh, um, an overall view of the mechanics behind the events and how to get um, the maximum reward um, in the in the map so you know Again, this is just a video refresh starting from this for the Verdant Brink and then uh, I'll make a couple other videos for the um, Oric Basin and Tango Death as well um, for this. Oh, and also the Dragon Sand. So here we go. Alright, so uh, for the data, um, day cycle, oh sorry, um, I need to get the overall information first. There will be the day cycle and the night cycle. The day cycle is 45 minutes time limit and also the night cycle is also another 45 minutes. And 45 minutes is a time limit for you to get into tier 4. Now in Heart of Thorns, uh, just a little bit of refresh for you who are currently uh, who are away for so who are away for so long and, and you forgot what is what does tier mean. Um the um the reward scale in Heart of Thorn is starting from tier one to tier four, and you need to get into tier four as soon as possible before the time limit hits up. Um, the reason for that is because uh, when you when you have tier four at the end of the scale, uh, at the, yeah at the end of the time limit, then the the game the system will reward you with you know with a better loot rather than you know you being down tier one or you know like not having any tier on tier zero so that is precisely what a lot of uh, a lot of people prefer to have at the end of the at the end of the time limit especially when you come to the organized map that's what they prefer to do now in Vernon Brink um, there will be five outposts during the day uh, each outpost they will have events in it uh, so the top right corner of the map which is it's their outpost Sometimes I refer to that as a frog outpost because that's where the frog people are living. Uh, the bottom right is the Pale River outpost, the central outpost, which sometimes people refer to call it, uh, prefer to call it as the proper name, which is Part Encampment. Um, and the bottom left corner of the map is the Noble outpost. outpost and the top left corner of the map which is the ordinance corps outpost now for each outpost there will be several events and i have the number for you it's their outpost there will be nine events for you to complete pale river bottom right of the map six events and uh, you know it's, it seems to be short but it's not actually not short at all like when you do it you'll see what i mean the central outpost nine events Noble Outpost, also nine events, and the um, Ordnance Corps Outpost, seven events. Now, each of those events will be similar to what you have already been doing in, um, you know, like by the time that you get into a Heart of Thorns map, I would assume that you have you have some sort of knowledge about like, you know, the um, the event system work in Gears 2. So it's, it's not that much different at all um, to the other events that we have already done in Interior. Uh, in the Dice Cycle, there won't be any big bosses, so you don't have to worry about that. And um, but they do, but they do have small, uh, small bosses, so uh, champions and um, you know things like that. So I'll, I'm not gonna get into too much detail about the, those events because they are they are linear. So you do one, you move on, and you do the next one. So yeah, it just follow 
you just follow the instruction of what the screen is telling you uh, okay you need to deliver this egg to this person and etc so because it's similar to what you have already been doing interior and um, so I don't see any any reason for me to comment further on those aside from the fact that sometimes uh, for uh, sometimes like people want to do the achievement in if that was to be the case then there are other videos on YouTube that show you how to do the achievement uh, on that particular on that particular quest so uh, if that something that you will be looking for then you know head on to those videos or you can look at on a wikipedia and and let's let me be honest with you like those achievements are not really that hard at all i mean like i figure like most of them out in my first uh, on my first attempt so so you know it's not it's not something that you know uh, rocket sign or anything like that so don't you don't have to worry too much about those and yes uh as i said the events in verdun bring are very very easy um, you just step onto you just pick one outpost that you want to do for that uh, for that day and then you just go ahead and do it and you know five outposts associate with like if you're in an organized map okay so what I would highly recommend people to do when they're in an organized map is that they have at least um, it has to have at least five commanders or maybe four is okay but i prefer to have at least five commanders in an organized map during the daytime for the food and brink the reason for that is because like each commander can tell people on what to do you know like uh, the guy in the uh, the guy in the top right corner of the map it's their outpost he can tell the rest of the commander say like oh okay so like i'm i'm doing this at the moment and this is currently my situation and i should be finishing in about like um for uh, like 10 minutes or so and etc so the other commanders know the situation in the itself outpost and if they need any help they can come and help them so five commanders one in the itself outpost one in the Pale River outpost, one in the Central, one in the Noble, and one in an Ordnance Corps. And each of them have to coordinate with each other to be able to, you know, to finish off the task in each outpost. And once you finish off the task in each outpost, um, so that's like five of them done. Once you, the, uh, once you finish off five of them, it will push up the scale into tier four reward. And if you have any time left, now it's the time to reorganize and then moving on to the night cycle, you know. Uh, and so that's pretty much that's what cover for the daytime. You know, it's very simple. It's not something. It's not something that you know out of ordinary, uh, like the raid. Um, you know, the raid mechanic, anything like that. No, it's this is PVE normal content that you see every day, uh, in Gears Two. So. Uh, just aside from the fact that you know it's required a coordination just a little bit of a coordination aspect into that uh, that you know like one outpost require the coordination of the other to you know to know the situation of the entire map to be able to push into the greater reward compared that to the old map interior um, the old maps like most of the maps interior anyway before Heart of Thorns that um, you know you don't really require you don't really need people to be um, doing you know stuff that uh, require coordination between the groups you can just go there kill a lot of mobs and then you're done now no this this is a little bit you know require a little bit of coordination between groups so that's pretty much it for the um, daytime and i'll be moving on to the night cycle Oh, just a little bit of information before we moving on to the night cycle. I forgot to mention uh, mention this before. Um, this is in regard to the mini games. Now, for some of you who wanted to um, maximize your masteries, um, you need some mastery points, and some of the mastery points can be obtained by doing mini games, and the mini games uh, cannot be be unlocked by completing the outpost so in that sense you need to complete the outpost to be able to get into the mini game so um just a little information that i forgot to mention in my previous talk so yeah um with that without further ado let's moving on to the night cycle all right so once you complete the daytime when the time limit hits up for the daytime you're moving on to the nighttime now the nighttime there's a key difference between the day and the nighttime is that there won't be a lot of events in terms of following the npcs so during the daytime you have like npc in the fire outpost that you need to follow to do the events and then complete that outpost but during the during the nighttime 
that won't be the case the nighttime event is actually that force it will force you to do the defensive um, mechanic by that I mean you have to defend the um, the camp the five outposts there'll be five outposts and um, I would highly recommend to have five commanders in each outpost and then once you pick out the commander you want to follow then starting to defend that outpost from the modern minions right and once you defend that more from the modern minions uh, you can set up a defensive perimeter and then you need to improve that defensive per perimeter to be able to have the chopper to land on the camp and the reason for that is because um, there are five bosses up in what we call the canopy the canopy is the um, the upper level of the map so it's in the clouds it's in you know it's in the cloud it's in the sky and there are five bosses that station up in the uh, up in the upper level and so like we need to go up there and defeat them and they were also partially responsible for the defeat of the the pact uh, when we first came in to you know to take the fight into the mod uh, to the dragon itself so they, they were partially responsible for that attack as well so it's time for us to settle the score for good so you know um that's one of the reason why we need to defend the camps and then set out a perimeter when we set out a perimeter we have to go out uh, you know go go out around that the camps to look for to look for the um what do you call it the supplies uh, airship supplies and once you have the airship supplies you come back into the camp and then give it to the NPC so that they can set up the defensive perimeter so yeah so like there are five main outposts just like during the daytime but instead of following the events you actually you you just defend the um, outpost and then go out there and, and take supplies and then come back and then uh, you know give it to the NPC to set up the defensive perimeter uh, there are also other smaller camps around, but they won't require a lot of uh, a lot of people to defend them. Um, uh, the smaller camps, for my experience anyway, I'll, last time I did it, I only required you know two to three people to actually standing around and start doing it. So yeah, like the smaller camps won't be that big of an issue. So um, just have two or three people. But the main camps. Uh, like the five main camps, they require to have like quite a fair number of people to actually, you know, to do the events and to defend the camps from other people and also good loot as well for those of you who are interested in that. And so once you set up that, uh, once you fully set up for the defensive perimeter, time to take the fight up to the canopy. There, there are going to be five bosses and I'm going to go through each of them uh, after this. Okay, so for the first boss, I usually just go for the uh, Frog Brothers or sometimes people call it the... Um, uh, well, usually people it's called the frog duo, but I, I usually call them frog brothers because that's what they are. Now, there'll be a fat one and a skinny one in my person because I can't remember the name of those two. So I just call them a fat and a skinny one. So let me just give you an example on the mechanic of this boss fight because it's really easy. But using the example, it will make it will make it so much easier for me to explain stuff. So say for example, you start attacking the skinny one, right? And you get the uh, health points down to a certain level, say 40%. I can't remember the exact number of the percentage before he's going to activate his second phase. But uh, the skinny one is a range unit. And then when you reduce the health, the health point down to a certain level, say 40%, he will start teleport to the fountain, um, to, to the healing fountain up in the, um, up in the upper level also upper level of the canopy as well uh, and the um, there are two ways that you can get uh, on top of that I think that they also another way but it's you know too long um, the first and what I would highly recommend people to use is like uh, use the bouncing mushroom and when you use the bouncing mushroom you need to have level one of the uh, of the itself I think it's itself yeah yeah it's the itself law um, the first mastery of the itself law you have the bouncing mushroom you get onto the bouncing mushroom it would uh, it would push you on top of the fountain and you can start negating his healing process from the healing fountain and once you once you uh, once you reduce that down to a certain level he will teleport back down to the um, to the previous platform and then you can start dealing damage and killing him so you know that's one way of doing it or the second way is that you use the updraft and also start gliding a little bit but i dislike that because it just takes so uh, so much longer for you to get on and also you have to do a little bit of personal jumping uh, to get on top of the platform so it's just taking a little bit too much time 
for you to get on top of the um on or to get on to get on top of the platform to the fountain to the fountain uh, to the healing fountain so i would not highly re i would not recommend you to be doing that at all um so if you have like i would highly recommend you to have the bouncing mushroom to be able to do it and um you know once you once you get the skin it out start fighting the fat one so it doesn't really uh, the fat one is the um the melee one and he has quite a fair bit of aoe attack so just uh you know pay attention to the ground and if you see any like rest circle or anything like that try to dodge it but like i said it's not really a hard fight at all i mean like there's only two of them doesn't really matter which one you pick at the end of the day you still have to kill two of them anyway so if you start off with this fat one at about 40 percent he will jump off uh to the uh, to the healing fountain then you know you use the mushroom bounce bounce to the top of the fountain and then start dealing damage to him negating his healing process and then kill him once you do that go with the skinny one and vice versa so it's not really um a hard boss to fight this is actually one of the easiest and um uh, and you know if you're completely new to the map i would say go with this one first or there's also another one that's really really easy as well which i'm gonna get into it uh in a second but yes this is one of the easiest and i would highly recommend for the new players completely new to the map to take either this or the other one which is the name for the other one is matriarch so I'm not gonna go to uh, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail of Matriarch because Matriarch is the easiest boss in my personal opinion. She's located in the central outpost um, of the uh, I'm sorry the canopy of the central outpost. So you don't need any um, also you don't need any like master, high end mastery to be able to you know to come to her location. Uh, you just need a gliding mastery which you probably have anyway when you first come into the map you probably have the the, uh, the gliding anyway and that's all you need that's all you need to get into her platform and her attacks are very very basic um you know like just look for any red or yellow circle on the ground and if she's summoning her minions uh, just you know kill them and if she start bouncing off and flying around and start breathing fire just like look for her directions and then and then jump off i mean like not jump off dodge um the attack and you'll be fine so i'm not going to go too much into detail about her fight because it's really 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 easy um and you pretty much like you can do it like on the go um there's not going to be that big of an issue for you uh so i would highly recommend for new players like complete who are completely new into the map that you know that haven't been into verdant brink before like 100 percent fresh start doing either matriac first or frog brothers but I would highly recommend doing Matriarch first before you jump on to the Frog Brothers. Because in the Frog Brothers, you still need the Bouncing Mushroom from the Ezel Lore. Which, in case, some of you might not have it yet. So Matriarch is probably the starting point, the starting boss for you to do. So I'm just going to stop here for Matriarch because she's really, really easy. And then I'll be moving on into Patriarch, which is the um, um, another woman that you need to kill. Now for Patriarch, Patriarch is a male legendary weapon and it's located in the Pale River Outpost, which is uh, in the bottom left, sorry, bottom, not bottom left, bottom right corner of the map. And um, it's very easy to kill. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not hard at all in my personal opinion, but you would be required to have Updraft. Updraft is, uh, if I remember that correctly, it's in the second level of your mastery in the gliding. So for those of you who are completely new to the map, uh, you might not have it. And for those of you who have been away for a long time, you might not also not have it either. So uh, I don't know your circumstances. Um, so please have a look at your mastery and make sure it has updraft. Without without updraft, you won't be able to get on top of the platform he's standing on top of to participate in the fight. And yeah so make sure that you have updraft and then um you can you can you can participate in the event in in killing the boss if not then just go down to the ground level and level up your mastery uh until that you can get updraft so anyway so patriarch is male legendary weapon and um, it's really easy uh it's not a hard at all um first you just you know start dealing damage to him when it reach a certain level uh, reach a certain level of health what he would do is that he will put up a shield uh, surrounding him and then you cannot deal any damage to him. That's fine. Uh, just go down to the second level of the platform that he's standing on top of. And there will be a lot of woven eggs lying around. And so you need to pick up those woven eggs and then use the updraft to get on top of the um, platform that he's standing on top of and then 
throw the Wyvern eggs to him. So what it will do is that it will explode and dealing damage to the shield surrounding him. And if enough people are doing it, then it will break the shield completely. And then he'll be, you know, able to, um, you know, you'll be able to attack him again. So that's what that's what you that's what the mechanic is about. And so it's not really that, you know, that difficult to get a hang of so it might require a little bit of practice for you to uh, to do it um, as fast as possible it just in just in the event of you in short you shot on time so for for sometimes like you know in the map um i have seen i have been participating into a couple of maps where i only had about like five minutes left and uh, the patriarch help points is about like what 100% full no not 100% full roughly about like 95% full so in that case then you 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 sort of like have a little bit of like a time pressure but uh, if you do it right then five minutes is more than enough I mean like I have seen I have been into a patriarch fight when it's only took about two minutes two to three minutes um, and I'm not exaggerating uh, seriously two to three minutes uh, like I have been in a couple of maps that two to three minutes is more than enough for patriarch and so for the boss fights, I would give it maximum of five minutes for each boss. Um, so like if you have enough people for each boss in this in this canopy, then it will be very easy for you to complete this within within five minutes for all of the bosses. But provided that you have you need to have enough people. So but anyway, the patriarch that is that simple. So just fight him until he get down to a certain level uh, of health point. And then he will put up a shield, go down to the second level, pick up the eggs, get you no know, use updraft, get on top of the level, get on top of the platform, throw the eggs at him. Uh, it will break the shield, and then he'll be um, you know weakened against your damage, and then you can start dealing damage to him again, and just continue until he's dead. So that's it for Patriarch. The next one will be in a noble outpost, and that will be the X Master. And trust me on this X, Ma X Masters, he is. Um, he requires to you you know he requires you to have a certain level of um, mastery points to be able to detect him and I'm gonna get in that in a second. Okay, so for the X Master now the X Master is gonna be a little bit difficult for those of you who don't have the um, New Hawk stealth detection because what he's gonna do for himself is that he's gonna stealth, and when he stealth himself, you won't be able to uh, to see him to uh, you know dealing damage to him. So I would highly recommend you to have it. But it's gonna be a little bit of a problem for those of you who come really into the map because the stealth detection in the New Hawk law will be level four, and to get to that level four, it will require a substantial amount of experience. So you know, if you don't have that, go to the ground and start leveling up your mastery. And um, uh, there's also another way. Before I went for a holiday, what I did was uh, I I did. A, what what I used was I used the um, the trap AOE for my dragon hunter and what it did uh, the effect of that was to you know AOE the entire um, the entire spot where he was standing and that would allow me to see him in a short period of time and on top of that it will also you know deal damage to him and so like I got my participation out of that instead but feel free to try because a lot of people they told me that it has been fixed so I don't know the full story if it has been fixed or not but feel free to try if not then just go down the ground and start uh, you know leveling up your mastery now aside from that there's has you know um, there's nothing I can nothing else I can say about this boss aside from the fact that he has stealth and most of it attacks are very easy to see and you know that would not require um, you know any like fancy technique or you know difficult like you know skills stuff like that no this this is really easy you just need to have your stealth detection and you set and just put everything on him and he's gonna be dead so he's really easy so aside from that um, that's that's all I can say about this boss so let's move on to the spell master okay so now the spell master is gonna be a little bit interesting not difficult but interesting uh, in my personal opinion because what it does is that at first um, sorry I need to give an overview first it located at the ordinance corpse in the top left corner of the map and um, when you get there just take the canopy I mean take the chopper going up to the canopy as always but you need to have the bouncing mushroom without bouncing mushroom you won't be able to get on top of the platform or alternatively you need to have the updraft but 
I find I find that having the bouncing mushroom is much easier than level up the updraft if you are completely new to the map. For those of you who already have it, ignore what I'm saying and just like go along and fighting the boss. Um, so yeah, for those completely new, you need a bouncing mushroom. Highly recommend for you to have the bouncing mushroom. Uh, even better if you have updraft, but that doesn't really matter because either way you still have you still require to get the bouncing mushroom to get on top of the platform anyway. So, yep, spell master. Um, at first, there will be three mini bosses for you to fight, three champions. I'm not gonna go into detail about those because they are easy. All you need to do is watch out for AOE effect, and that's it. Now, once you kill all three of them, they will merge into a single entity, and you know the spell master will emerge from that single merge, that from that emergement. Is that emergement is a word, whatever. Uh, so that you know they fuse together. Yeah. So from that fusion, they uh, the spell master will emerge from that. Um, so start fighting him, and uh, but he will push. Sorry, not pushing, but he will set up the entire platform to be in the um, um, similar to what I call a donut ring. So basically, from the outer circle, you have this sort of like shockwave ring that will push you outside of the platform. So you need to have gliding to be able to survive, you know, like in, in the event that you got pushed outside the platform that you land on the ground and then, you know, you need to use your gliding to, uh, you know, um, start gliding otherwise you ended up dead. Um, but stay away from the outer rings, uh, just, uh, just go inside in, in, in the inner circle, that's where you'll be fighting him. And it's similar looking to a donut, right? You know, you see the donut, you have the outer ring and then there's a hole in the middle. That, that hole is the inner circle where you'll be fighting him. Yeah, just look at that. Look at the, the freaking donut. That's what it is. That's what it looks like. Uh, looks like. So yeah, uh, you're fighting in the inner circle and what he will do is that sometimes he will uh, use his hammer to knock you back into the outer ring and that will push and that combined with the outer ring effect it will push you out of the platform so if he does that try to use the stability if you can uh, any spells or any skills that have stab sta uh, stability go ahead and use it and start dodging it and then go back into the inner circle um, sometimes he will uh, you know after pushing you and you know after pushing you outside um, using that skill of his hammer attack, he will teleport right back into the middle circle. And what he would do is that he will create, he will stomp into the ground and create a shock wave that will push everyone back. So there, there are gonna be about two seconds before he's gonna do that. So within that two second, uh, you have to dodge. And then after dodging that, he will use the he will use the hammer to push you back as well. So just look for his direction. Uh, sorry, like dodge the uh, dodge the shock wave um, after he teleport back into the middle circle, and look for his direction. If he's right on, if he's going to use his hammer against your direction, roll to him, roll to him, and then like get onto his the other side, get get onto his back, and that will, you know that will save you from the attack. So just, you know, in summary, stay away from the outer circle, stay inside the inner circle. That's where you will be fighting him. And if he teleport right in the middle of the map, uh, in the middle of the circle, in the circle, he will create a shockwave. There are chances that he will create a shockwave. Dodge that. If he's going to use his hammer to push you back into the outer circle, dodge that also but you need to look at the direction where he will be using that hammer if he if he used the uh, the hammer in the different directions don't worry about that if he's going to use it against you what you need to do is to dodge into him and so that will give you that will you access into the other side of him so like his back in short and you know and start fighting him again so just take that mechanic into consideration when you start fighting him. So I find it a little bit more interesting than doing with other bosses, you know, because the other bosses are really easy, except for Patriarch, which is, uh, you know, require a little bit of work when you have to go uh, on top of the platform and throwing the eggs at him. But other, other than that, uh, this boss is also easy. And after completing this boss, um, Hopefully, by the time you will complete all of the outposts in the all of the all the bosses, your friends and your team in the map, and hopefully all the commanders like direct them right, they will complete the uh, all the bosses as well, and then just 
uh, settle down with the map and give everybody the rewards from tier 4 hopefully and uh, yeah if you complete it congratulations you have the uh, play armor box for those of you who are interested in doing that uh, I mean uh, for the achievement and um, yeah good luck have fun and if you have any any other questions feel free to let me know um, so but please keep that in mind that this is, this is the first time I do this kind of content I don't usually do this kind of content you know um, so I probably will make a couple of mistakes uh, every now and then um, in in this in this kind of video so if I do in if, if you think that something is not right feel free to give me a feedback and then I'll try to adjust it and if necessary I will uh, redo the entire video so again have fun enjoy and uh, check out all the videos for the um, orc person um, tango death and dragons stand um, if you want to do the other metas in in other maps in her thoughts so yeah have fun i'll see you later